Welcome to Pals. It's Professor Anyamu's Anatomy Lecture Series, where we make anatomy simple. Today I'll be teaching you pleural cavity. Now, I've noticed that people have problems with pleural cavity. Where is pleural cavity? What's the difference between pleural cavity and thoracic cavity? What's the difference between thoracic cavity and midacinum and all those structures? We'll take our time to make them simple today. How are we going to do that? We're going to start, I'll take you through a simple structure like this, where we're just having Three, three, three chambers. We are going to come to how we are having this complex structure where we are having the lungs in each of the compartments now, the medial septum, that's the medicinum, and then uh, the long root, the hilum here. Already we are seeing two layers of um, the serous membrane here. And then um, that is what I'm going to take time today to clear you concerning. And then how, how am I going to do that? I'll take you through simple steps. Steps that have already been illustrated in the diagrams, in diagrams one, two, three, and then diagrams four, how this simple structure we are seeing here actually metamorphosed to the complex structure we have here. And then I will also make sure I teach you how this um, pl uh, pleura gets reflected on the thoracic wall. That is what the next chart here will do. And not just on the thoracic wall, they are also wrapped around the structures that are found in the hilum of the lungs. That's also what we're going to use this to demonstrate, to show you. So please stay connected. We're going to make sure that um, plural cavity is something that you will easily recall. Please subscribe to our channel if you have not. And then if you have, also make sure you click the notification bell so that you'll be the first to get our lectures. We'll start with the basics. Now, what is pleural cavity? Pleural cavity is a space that is found between the two layers of uh, membrane that covers the lungs. That is, this is a transverse section. The structure we have here is a transverse section of the thoracic cavity. The thoracic cavity is this entire space. The thoracic cavity is the entire space. All these structures, the one here, all these structures, the one I'm showing here, the one here, the one here, the one here, are all found inside the thoracic cavity. That is to say, both the mediastinum, the space at the center, both the smaller spaces, both the lungs, both the smaller spaces between the two layers of the lungs, which I will soon tell you is called the pleural cavity, are all components within the thoracic cavity. So, now, simply defined, the the pleural cavity is the space between the two layers wrapping the lungs. The lungs is wrapped by two layers. The name of that layer is pleural membrane. Now, what is pleural membrane? It is a serous membrane that, that covers or lines the whole lungs and also the, the chest cavity. This membrane is serous. What do you mean by that? It means it has a mesothelial cells. When we say mesothelial, I'm talking about flat cells or squamous cells. So it has mesothelial cells that produce, produce fluids that are watery. That's what serous means, that are watery. Now, it is very easy to understand here. This, as we said, this is a, this is a transverse section. Now, what we are seeing here, I'll use, um, I'll use a red to denote it. Now, what we're seeing here is we're seeing this single serous sheet. These, these are the single serous sheets that will eventually form our, our pleural cavities. We have one on the right, we have one on the left. Eventually, the lungs will grow into this serous sac, this is a serous sac, and then push them towards the extreme stream and then give rise to make them form two layers. Now, let's see how, number one, this single sheet of serous sac will now give rise to forming a double layered structure and now also give rise to forming the, the pleural cavity we are actually talking about. We're going to start from here. Now, this is a simple, this, this, is, a, this is a coronal sec section of what we're seeing here. So this is one, this is the left side of the, the serous sac, this is the right side. At this point, the, the lung has not started growing. The lung is still growing. So what does the lung do? The lung grows from the medial side, and then what it does is to invaginate, to push into the two serous sacs. 
That is, it keeps pushing. By the time the lung starts growing, it will keep pushing into this structure. So what this structure does is to begin to fold on itself. Now let's take these diagrams, they better illustrated it. At this point, the two lung buds have not started growing into the two serous sacs. Now when we come to the diagram two, we're seeing a difference. Now the lung is already growing within the serous sac at this diagram two. Now, when we come to diagram three, we see more progress in the growth of the lung. And then if you follow, suddenly something is happening. Now, we're seeing the area. We're seeing, I want to change the color we're having there now. I want to change our blue color to a green color. Now, suddenly we're seeing two layers are gradually forming. The ones on the inside, I'm, moving, I'm removing them now. I'm using a green because soon they will bear a separate name. I'm, I'm using a green. On the inside, I'm using a green. Now, and the ones on the outside. So as the long tissues are growing inside the sac, part the inner layer of the sac wraps around the long tissue, while the outer layer it will wrap around the the, the inner lining of the thoracic cavity. So at this point, we're seeing suddenly this single sheet by, by virtue of the invagination or the ingrowth of the lung tissue has at this point become two layers. What are the two layers now? We're seeing the one at the outer part here. The one here becomes the outer layer and the one on the inside becomes the inner layer. Now, at the end of the day, we are seeing, is it still continuous? Yes, it is still continuous. Let us trace the outer layers. Now, this is the outer layer. This is the outer layer of the serous sac, the pleural membrane. Now, from this point, there is something is, is getting formed here. Something is getting formed here. Now, this point is the point of the hilum of the lungs, where we find the long roots. So this is the long root. At this point, we're seeing a cough. So this, there's a cough at this point. There's a cough at this point. Now, this is called the pulmonary cough. Now, the pulmonary cough is where we find the two layers of the lungs now continuing with each other. Where are those two layers again? Now, the one wrapping around the lung is the inner layer, and the name is called the visceral layer. It's called the visceral layer. Why? Because it is wrapping around the visceral organ. Also, it's called the pulmonary layer. Pulmonary layer. Now, the one on the outside is called the parietal layer. The parietal layer. So we've seen the two layers of the pleural membrane, the inner layer and the outer layer. Now to the main focus of the day. There's a space between them. So this is the inner layer, and this is the outer layer. So it's a space between these two, two outer and inner layers that is called the pleural cavity. So let me just put it, let me use, um, which color? Let me use a green. So let me use a green. So this is actually the pleural cavity, our focus for the day. This is the pleural cavity. So now when I say that the pleural cavity is the potential space. Well, why is this a potential space? Because actually it's a very thin space between the visceral layer of the pleural membrane and the, uh, the parietal layer of the pleural membrane. Sometimes they call it the pleural space. Whether they are saying pleural cavity or pleural space, it's still the same. Now what is found there is what's called the pleural fluid, is a serous fluid. Now what's the quantity? Well, they will tell you between 10 mils to, between five mils to 10 mils. Some other people will tell you between um, eight mils to 10 mils. But there is a constant, um, a constant volume of um, around five to 10 mils within this uh, cavity. And then this fluid has a lot of function. It has what it does. Number one, the pleural fluid regulates the pressure between uh, inside the lungs and outside the lungs during the process of breathing. And then actually there is a negative pressure inside here. There is a negative pressure inside here. Number two, this thin film of fluid helps 
to reduce friction between the two layers. And the visceral pleura actually covers the lung so tightly and even to the inner depths of the lung fissures within the lobes, it wraps around on them to the point that you, it's very difficult to separate the visceral layer from the tissues of um, the lungs. So they are inseparable. The outer layer, that's the parietal layer, wraps around the thoracic cavity. When we say thoracic cavity, what do we mean? We are talking about the inner surface of the sternum, we're talking about the inner surfaces of the ribs, the intercostal spaces, the lateral aspects of the vertebra. So these are all the structures, and then the costal cartilages too. These are all the inner surface of the thoracic cavity, so it lines them. And then it gets attached them via um, this loose areolar connective tissue called the endothoracic fascia. Endothoracic fascia. So endothoracic fascia is a layer of loose areolar connective tissue that attaches the parietal layer to the inner linings of thoracic cavity. So what have I said? I've said two things. I said the visceral layer is attached to the lung tissue and the parietal layer is attached to the inner linings of the thoracic cavity. So what does it mean? Now let's look at the function of this um, fluid here. So what this fluid does is, number one, it maintains the pressure, we've talked about it, number two, it ensures um, there is uh, a less friction during the movement. And then number three, it does what is called mechanical coupling. What does mechanical coupling mean? It means that pure fluid, fluid makes sure that these two layers are actually held close to themselves. Now, what happens if there is a problem with this tension? I told you there's a negative pressure. There's a negative pressure in this, in this sac. Sometimes there could be an influx of fluid. There could be influx, there could also be influx of air. There could be influx of blood. There could be influx of uh, even pus. And then they're all clinical pathological conditions that could come probably as a result of pneumonia, as a result of heart failure, and several other conditions that could give rise to them. Now, if we have, if has, we have influx of fluid inside this, inside this cavity beyond the, beyond the normal volume, we call that pleural effusion. Whatever that can affect the mechanism of um, secretion of fluid within the, the pleural cavity, can give rise to pleural effusion. So, but the important thing is that there is an unusual gathering of fluid, as we can see in this new diagram that we just brought up now. So, in this new diagram, we are seeing what's actually happening. Now, this is pleural effusion. Now, we're seeing fluid. This is actually fluid. This is fluid. And now, this fluid is gathering within the visceral pleura. This is the visceral pleura along the lungs. And then that's the parietal pleura. So this fluid is between it. And then see what this is doing. Now this fluid is pushing on the lung tissue. Now there's a reduction in the lung. It compresses the lung tissue. And now what this does is that it reduces the lung's vital capacity. This patient will be breathless. If air fills this cavity, we call that condition pneumothorax. 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 So there could be pathological conditions where air can feel this. Sometimes it may not be air, it can be blood. So when it is blood filling it up, we call it hemothorax, hem. Sometimes it can also be pus. So when they're filled with pus, it's called empyema. So we can see pus. We call it empyema. Also, sometimes you can see a combination of both air and water. Both air and water. We call it hydronemothorax. We call it hydronemothorax. So this is actually what we see in the in the pleural cavity. So, um, by way of uh, putting, things, putting some of the things we've learned so far together, we said that the pleural cavity is the space between the parietal and the visceral layers. And then it has 
the it has a fluid inside called the pleural fluid, which is a serous fluid. I will talk about the functions of this fluid. So we'll take a look at the two layers that actually formed this uh, parietal uh, pleural cavity. We'll look at those two layers. We said in the earlier part of this class, we said that those two layers are one, the inner layer, which is called the, the uh, visceral layer, and the outer layer, which is called the parietal layer. So the, the layers, parietal layer covers all the inner linings of the thoracic cavity. In the earlier class, we mentioned the parts that are covered, the postural aspect of the sternum, the costal cartilages, the inner linings of the ribs, even the sides of the thoracic vertebra. So now we also said that this um, tissue is attached to the thoracic wall by loose area connective tissue, which is the endothoracic fascia. We mentioned it here, I think it's still there. We say it's endothoracic fascia. Now, we are going to subdivide the, this parietal layer into different subsections, depending on the part of this uh, thoracic cavity it is lining. So by that division, we have about four different um, aspects of the parietal pleura. So those parts are one, we have the area that covers the, the, um, the coastal cartilages. We call it the, the coastal layer. We have the area that covers the lateral aspects of mediastinum. We call it the mediastinal layer. We have the area that covers the apex of the lungs. The apex of the lungs, we call that one the cervical layer. And then we have the last one, the one that covers the, the upper surface of the diaphragm. We call that layer the diaphragmatic layer. So these are the four sections of the parietal layer, the coastal, the mediastinal, the cervical, and the diaphragmatic layer. Now for the coastal layer, we mentioned the regions if they are covering. The mediastinal layer covers lateral aspects of mediastinum. It is the layer that we, where we the part of the pleura called the cuff of the pleura. Cuff of the pleura. At the cuff of the, of the cuff of the pleura, the two layers continue with themselves. And now something also happens within this region. Now there is a fold at that point. Now we're seeing the fold, we're seeing those two folds. This is around the cuff of the cuff of the pleura. So we're seeing the long roots, the structure that, that found in the hilum forming the long root. And now this is the cuff of the pleura. Now we're seeing another fold down. This fold down is what we call the pulmonary ligament. It actually um, runs down up to the level of the diaphragm. So what does this pulmonary ligament do? The pulmonary ligament actually helps to uh, make adjustment for the expansion of some of the large veins that are found in the long root. In the cervical layer, cervical layer refers to the layer that is seen covering the apex of the lungs. It is found deep to the suprapleural membrane. If you remember the suprapleural membrane, the distance between the medial aspect of the clavicle and that upper part of the lung is about one inch, and then the distance between the, that upper part of the lung and the cart cartilage of the first rib is about two inches. That is so that it's closer to the, to the clavicle than to the first rib. So that will end the first part of this lecture. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions, please drop them in the comment section. The part two of this lecture is on pleural recesses and clinical correlates associated with the pleura. If you consider this material helpful, we will encourage you to subscribe, like the video, and share it to your friends that it will also be helpful too. And together we will build a unique anatomy family where our goal will be to make anatomy simple. So thank you for now and see you in my next video.